We have analysed four film trailers, two of which are of the horror genre and the other two of, the, of comedy. The first film trailer being Jennifer's Body, released in 2006 and starring Megan Fox. The second horror film we analysed was 30 Days of Night, which was released in 2007 and stars Josh Hartnett and was directed by David Slade. When it came to our comedy films, we decided to analyse 21 Jump Street, which features Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum, and the other comedy, What to Expect When You're Expecting, which is, a, which is a comedy which was released in 2012 and, and features the likes of Cameron Diaz, Jennifer Lopez and Elizabeth Banks. There are many different codes and conventions of film trailers. They usually inclu include key moments from the film which are not placed in the sequence of the film and do not give away any crucial plot details. Some key conventions are the title, which usually will not which usually will be shown at the end of the film, the actor's and director's name and any accolade the film may have. However, in horror trailers, there will be some slight differences to, say, a comedy trailer. An example is a jump scare, which is usually placed in the horror trailer when the audience has relaxed to catch them off guard and make the trailer memorable, whereas conventions of comedy trailers are jokes and things that make the audience laugh, such as characters falling over. In all the trailers, the first shot is the same, the audience certificate information. For the two horror films, trailers, for the two horror film trailers, the certificate is higher at a 15 rate, at a 15 rating, whereas comedy trailers can have a range of different certifications. The purpose of showing the audience the certification is to make sure that firstly the audience watching the trailer are at an appropriate age and also that the audience is the correct target market for the film since it would be pointless showing a U-rating film to an audience in a cinema that are watching an 18 certificate horror film. For Jennifer's Body, the next shot is of the studio company logo being 20th Century Fox. A major film company representing Jennifer's Body as being a higher budget film, being able to afford major actors and special effects. This contrasts with the typical stereotype of general horror films as they are usually low budget films. The trailer for Jennifer's Body shows the film to be a black comedy horror, in turn making the film a hybrid. We know this as genre specific codes and conventions are continuously used throughout the trailer, with it such examples as a beginning shot in the trailer of the main character swimming in an isolated lake located in the middle of nowhere, with dark and on ominous connotations, a sinister looking street in the middle of the night, an isolated house and dark woods. Particular iconography is also used in the trailer, such as a lighter as the character is shown to be burning her tongue, two actresses near the end wearing prom dresses covered in blood and dirt, and dark sinister music throughout which picks up a faster pace by the end of the trailer. The typography in the trailer appears during every small clip with small white glowing font and a dark and sinister background. At first, the font begins to appear very slowly, but then the pace quickens as the music starts to speed up. The font is shown to, be, to the audience. At the end of the trailer, the font is flashing on the screen. The trailer for Jennifer's Body has several examples of special effects. These examples include one of the actress's eyes changing colour, a shadow of the actress's mouth changing and widening, and a clip of her burning her tongue with a lighter and repairing the burn straight away. Another one is a clip of the actress's mouth widening as she is about to attack her victim. All of the text used in each trailer reflect on the genre of the film. For example, by the trailer for Jennifer's Body, using bright small text with a dark background is being attempted to be portrayed. The trailer for Jennifer's Body firstly shows a set of different clips to show the innocence of perhaps what the main character used to be like. For example, walking down the hall, looking in a mirror, her friend and her smiling at each other. Then it shows her with her first victim as, she is as he is lured by her. There is then a clip of her best friend telling someone of the realisation that the main character is evil. There is 
Then a follow-up of numerous clips including her tongue, her burning her tongue, taking more victims and a picture of her face before she attacks. The main character, Jennifer, played by Megan Fox, is presented to the, is presented to the audience first with several shots of her at the beginning and throughout to express the important significance of the character as without her there would be no story. The trailer for Jennifer's Body uses several key scenes and characters so the audience is able to identify the narrative and character types. For example, one scene involving the main character Jennifer and one of her victims includes this dialogue. This isn't really her house, is it? This scene between her and her victim shows the realisation of her character as she easily manipulates her victims by luring them with her sexual nature and then killing them one by one. This example presents the naivety of all of her victims whilst presenting her as manipulative and deceitful. One other example shows a conversation between the main character, the main character's best friend and another character as she tries to explain to him that Jennifer is the one behind all of the killing. First evil. I know. No, I mean she's actually evil, not high school evil. This sinister yet comical sentence portrays this particular character to be, very, to be fairly important as she is presented to be wise and different from the other characters. In the trailer for Jennifer's Body, enigmas have been used throughout, such as one character telling another that the main character, Jennifer, is evil. Another enigma with Jennifer asking the question, Are you scared? Are you scared? And one character saying to her, I will finish you if I have to. I will finish you if I have to. All of these create uncertainty about what the main character is and the plot of the story, which will create excitement which will create excitement and attract the audience to want to see the film. A last example would be one character being pulled into the swimming pool by something that the audience is not shown, therefore would have to go and watch the film in order to see what is pulling him in. Jennifer's Body, tra Jennifer's body trailer has part of the plot unanswered, with elements of the film such as the audience having to wait for what is really what it really means by Jennifer being actually evil, as in what makes her evil and how this affects the narrative of the film. Another element is in which the audience have to wait for is the question unanswered as to whether one of the char main characters will eventually finish the main character Jennifer, how she will do this and how the storyline will end. During the first few seconds, for example, the main character is showed is shown walking down a hallway towards the camera with edited cuts in slow motion as she becomes closer and closer. Later on during the trailer there is then a point of view high angle shot of her from one of, the vic from one of her victims as she attacks, also representing the importance and personality of her character. One ex other example of an edited scene shows the co-star with a slow edited cut of an explosion behind her, which represents the chaos of the storyline and the importance of her character and the plot is also centred on her. During the first minute of the trailer of Jennifer's Body, both cuts and credits are linked as they start off slowly paced. However, as the speed of the edited cuts begin to quicken, so do the credits on the screen, as well as the sharpness of how they appear. One scene in the trailer of Jennifer's body involving the use of lighting includes the use of dark lighting as she entices her victim into an abandoned house. This symbolises the sinister side to her character and the whole plot and genre of the film. There is also another scene using extremely dark lighting involving the two main characters, again representing the horror genre of the film. One example for Je from Jennifer's body of specific colours being used would be the scene of her attack attacking one of her victims and red lighting appears throughout the clip which could symbolise blood and therefore death supporting the horror genre of the film. The genre of 30 Days of Night is also a horror. 
Fitting clearly be seen, as in the trailer they show a shot of some kind of vampire creature looking evil with blood covering his mouth. This is also a convention, as blood is a feature which is usually used in, in the films of a horror genre, as blood connotes death and danger. The typography used in the trailer is also conventional of a horror trailer, as it is, as it is the colour red, which as I previously explained, this colour connotes death and therefore darkens the mood. Titles in 30 Days of Night are a really prominent factor in getting across the narrative to the audience, since after the first scene they are used to tell us the background details to the film. For example, they tell us they are the last of their kind and above the Arctic Circle, night lasts for 30 days. The titles are shown pretty early on in the film. I think this is done as at the beginning of the trailer it is quite slow, whereas towards the end it gets quite fast. Therefore, by giving the audience this crucial information about the film at the start, they can come up with ideas that, that, think, that things they might think happen in the film. This is a good thing, since they will, they will want to know what happens and go and buy a ticket to see it. The trailer for Thirty Days of Night provides information about the general plot, but not so much of the whole, tra the whole film is given away. We learn that the film is set above the Arctic Circle, where, li where night lasts for 30 days, which is why vampires, who we are told are the last of their kind, have chosen to attack it, as they cannot live in the light. Through the trailer, we find out who the main characters are and some of the obstacles they are going to face in the film. One of the main characters seems to be an alpha male type, Josh Hartnett. I think, that the, I think this, as the first shot we see of him, we find out that he is a police officer who is being told to come back to the station. We need you at the station. This suggests that he is going to be a strong character that everyone is going to rely on in the film. Another character we are introduced to um, is, is very attractive and naive, saying vampires don't, don't exist. Vampires don't exist, Jake. Which is where Josh Hartnett's character will come in. This female type of character is very, very stereotypical and, and seems to be in the majority of horror films. The trailer does not use a vast amount of dialogue, but when it does it stands out and reveals information on what is to come in the film. For example, one of the main lines in the trailer is said by a prisoner that we do not know anything about. He says, bar the windows, try to hide. Bar the windows, try to hide, they're coming. going to try and get them. In addition to this, the prisoner also says another key line. They're cold in the weather. That's death approaching. The fact that he said this makes the audience wonder why he knows so much and what part he is going to have to play in the film. Also, the line itself is very chilling and should alert the audience that death is going to play a big part in the film. A character that I believe will be very significant, significant, but is not shown in much in the trailer, is the head vampire. The way that the character is shown in the, tr in the trailer immediately highlights to the audience that he is the antagonist, since he is not only abnormal, but stares chillingly to the audience. I think that one of the most significant shots in the trailer is the opening shot straight away be on the edge of their seats waiting for the next shocker. The biggest difference between the two horror trailers is definitely the opening, since where Jennifer's body starts off by easing the audience into the horror trailer, um, the trailer for 30 Days of Night starts straight away by scaring the audience with a jump scare. It is all silent and calm, then out of nowhere the woman in the scene gets dragged away, screaming. I think this gives the film a tense dramatic tone, which is needed to create a good horror film trailer. The shot after this is very significant as it is a low angled shot of the two vampires on the roof looking over the town as they are about to destroy it. The way the director has used the low angle shot shows that the vampires are superior to the humans and stronger than them too. 
because the pace of the trailer seems to change throughout, but towards the end of it, it speeds up and the editing becomes extremely quick and snappy. This is shown here. The way that they have used the, have cut the shots to go black back to the image creates an effect of blinking and makes the audience tense and want to stay focused on what is happening in the, in the film trailer. They also use very quick snapshots of the vampires. For example, here, the scene pace is quite fast and they put the shot, the shot of a vampire about to bite in. The shot is so fast that if the audience blinked, they would miss it. This is done a number of times throughout the trailer. I think it is as the director does not want to give away what the, what the vampire looks like and keep mystery in the film. However, here, a close-up of the head vampire is shown. The way that the shot is filmed is key to the trailer as he raises his head and seems to look straight at the camera, which should make the audience feel as if they are looking at them. The lighting in the trailer is also significant, a significant factor in creating an eerie atmosphere throughout the trailer. The lighting is dark and is set at night. However, the, however, the lighting effects that are used in certain scenes further create a chilling atmosphere. For example, here, the main character says, who are they? And the prisoner says, they are coming. Then we have an over-the-shoulder shot of the vampire behind the teenage boy. As soon as we see the vampire, the lights in the police station and then the town go all flickering and switch off, which hints to the audience that they are coming. The sound used in the trailer for 30 Days of Night is very, very stereotypical of the horror genre, since music is used mainly, is mainly string instrument, which creates an eerie atmosphere. The music overlay is apocalyptic themes by me, which is mostly piano and guitar music. This is played towards the end of the end, so that the feeling of desperation is, is, and fear is conveyed. Other sound effects that are used are diegetic. For example, they have heavy breathing, this again is helped to create the creepy atmosphere for the audience. The film What to Expect When You're Expecting is a comedy. One way in which you can tell the film is of this genre is down to the colours and typography used. Since the opening shot showed, shows blue clouds which straight away makes the audience feel safe and happy. Also the typography is bold and stands out in a blue colour and has pink borders. These colours are conventional of the comedy genre as they are fun and cheerful. The stars of what to expect when you're expecting are highlighted lots in the film and the trailer seems to be trying to show as many shots of the different stars as possible. Towards the end of the trailer, the names of the main stars are shown one by one with the image of the, the, the actor next to them. This is done since one of the biggest drawing points for going to see this film is that the, there are a whole host of names in it, which definitely will attract a mass audience. The trailer for what to expect when you're expecting does not give much away when it comes to the overall plot of the film. It gives the audience a general, general understanding that the film has lots of different characters who are all expecting a child in one way or another, and that all the different characters' lives will intertwine into one, one another's. In the trailer, we meet a variety of different characters, from Elizabeth Banks to Cameron Diaz. I would say that Elizabeth Banks' character is one of the main, main stars, as we see her appear in a number of different scenes her character's storyline seems to be that she is an author writing about the stress and misery of pregnancy. I think that Elizabeth Banks' character is shown so much since she is a character that women, women who, is the, who are the target market of this film can really relate to. For example, when she says, Well, I'm calling it. Pregnancy sucks. It is a comical piece of dialogue that will get the audience laughing and make them want to go and see the film. Another scene that that does this is with the dads who are called the dude. I think this is a significant scene since the film is mainly a, mainly a film that women would want to watch, but this scene could attract men to go and watch it as all the dads are talking about the bad parenting they have done. I found my baby swimming in the toilet, one says. This again is a scene that will get laughs and attract people to go and watch it. The, edi ed the editing shots that are used in the trailer for what to expect when you're expecting are very different from the two horror trailers, as the trailer for the comedy, as it is a trailer for comedy, therefore does not need to have quick quick cuts for drama and suspense. We automatically can tell that the trailer is comedy by just looking at the lighting in all the scenes, as they are bright and all the scenes are set in the daytime, creating a safe, warm and happy atmosphere for both the characters and the audience. The main type of camera shots that are used are mid shots. 
I think this allows the audience to see what is happening in the whole scene. And as it is not a horror, it would not be conventional for them to put lots of close-ups, as they are not trying to build up suspense. One type of editing that is used is slow motion. It is used when, the sh when showing the group of dads walking through the park together. The slow motion that has been used to create a comical scene that, that, uses, that is uses long shots of them coming into the park. And by using the slow motion, it makes them look cool when the audience all know that they're not. The sound used in the trailer and what to expect when you're expecting is stereotypical of a comedy trailer. It has quite a lot of dialogue between the characters and has mu music overlay. The trailer used three different songs with, as music overlay. The first one being Relax by Frank Goes to Hollywood. Relax, don't do it. We reserve the deluxe suite. This is your father. Husband, he's my husband. A lot of people say that. The song is quite upbeat, happy, and therefore fits into the genre of comedy. The second song is being is some kind of rap or hip hop song. It is used to show the slow motion scene with the dads. As I previously, previously said, this has been done for comical reasons. By using the song adds to the comical effect since the dads are since all the dads are not very cool by having them walk to the song they're trying to make them think that they look cool when they really do not. What to expect when you're expecting uses accolades, in, such as inspired by the best-selling book. By doing this, they're attracting the audience, firstly the ones who have read the book, as they have enjoyed the book, then they will be tempted to go and see it, see it on the big screen, and secondly people that have not read the book, and by saying it's best-selling, it will entice the audience to go and see it. All, three, all four films have disequilibrium in them, and the director of the film does not want to give the whole plot away, as they want them to go and pay for a ticket, in the cinema or purchase the film when it, when it is released on DVD so that equilibrium is restored. 